Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel again. Um, if this is the first time of coming to your visit to my website, welcome. If this is a returning subscriber, thank you for always visiting my website and always liking and always viewing and subscribing. Thank you so much. Uh, so way of introduction, I am John Bosco, but feel free to call me JB as my friends do call me. I am a Scrum Master and Agile coach for a number of time now or a number of years now, and I have passion for what I do. All right, so uh, let's get started for today. So the last time we were talking about uh, some Agile concepts, some Agile or Scrum concepts terminologies, because uh, one key thing I realized that most of the time Scrum Masters do not master or know how to communicate because of lack of the terminologies in an agile environment and also if you are new to an agile or if you are new to scrum it is necessary that you get yourself attuned you know get conversant with the terminologies with the concept with the phrases so that you can really you know participate in the conversation uh, with an agile consultant or an agile coach or even a scrum master okay all righty so um if this is the first time please i uh, encourage you to subscribe to my channel like view share with your friends colleague family members let them know about i need scrum master youtube channel um you can also visit my website at www.ineedscrummaster.com uh where i also meet with a number of people i um do six weeks class for people who wants to become scrum master and agile coach so just visit the website there are a number of information there if you want to schedule to meet with me you are more than welcome to do that there okay because of time frame let's get started for what we have today all right i'm just going to pull up some document or a document actually and then we can get started all righty so I guess you can see my screen. Um, the last time we started with um, some terminologies in Agile or using in Scrum, um, then we stopped at number 64, which is plan driven process. So today we're going to continue from number 65. I, like I said, I have over 100 terminologies. Uh, this is as a result of my experience as a Scrum master over the years and also through research. Right, I've listened to Scrum Masters, Agile Coach, you know, listen to professionals, listen to co-founders of Scrum, like people like Jeff Sunderland, Ken Schwaber, and even you know, giant figures like Mike Cohen. Um, so I try to, you know, draw and condense all of the terminologies. I'm not gonna say these are all, but I would say that it's you know close to all. All right. So for today, you know, we'll keep you know, explain some of these concepts and terminologies to us. Uh, in other words, so that it becomes easier for people who are new to Scrum or even professionals who are into Scrum and Agile to follow through. Planning poker, um, a consensus based technique for relative sizing or product backlog items. So one of the techniques that Scrum Masters or Scrum team when it comes to sprint planning in estimation is a technique called planning poker. It's a game where you have to uh, uh, distribute a card and then you know the team members will be able to consent or agree if they are going to uh, go with either um, two story points or two, two hours thereabouts. So it's a kind of a technique. So whenever you have planning poker, know that is a game. Portfolio backlog, a backlog composed of products, programs, projects, and high level ethics. So portfolio in terms of, I mean, we have spring with product backlog, we have portfolio backlog. So portfolio is a kind of a high level of product backlog where you have all of the epics that are really you know grouped together. Portfolio planning, just like an M, is where you know team meets in order to plan on how to go about uh in on how to go about for the portfolio. Potentially shippable product increment is an artifact. Um what it means is at the end of every sprint Team members are hoping to be able to ship something to the client. So what they ship to the client is potentially shippable products increments. OK, a uh, right principle is a fundamental truth or belief that serves as the foundation for how we approach products development. 
For example, we have the 12 um, Agile principles, right? So which is a way the Scrum team approaches uh, projects, products. There has two meanings. Uh, the first one is the result of a product development effort, right? Um, what that means is what the team members have been able to work for a particular number of sprints is the end result or the end result of what they have been working on is called a product. The second meaning in an agile environment is a good or service is consisting of a bundle of tangible and intangible attributes that satisfy consumers and is received in exchange for money or some other unit of value, which is relative to or which is related to the first you know, meaning. Product backlog. So like portfolio backlog, the product backlog is a kind of lower level of, of that. Um, the product backlog is like a container where the PO, which is the product owner, you know, um, puts in all of the customers' requirements. So before the before the Scrum team starts working on the project, the PO must have gathered requirements from the clients, stakeholders, and then the container where those requirements are uh, contained is the product backlog. Product backlog grooming. Is um it's not a ceremony uh it's not in the in the scrum guide so it is a way uh where the scrum team members before the sprint planning will be able to meet um to estimate the stories to prioritize the stories or to organize the items in the product backlog as the names can I either say product backlog grooming or product backlog refinement it means the same thing. Product backlog items, item PBI is an item feature. When I mean item, it could be feature, user story, defect, spike that is valuable from the PO's perspective and is inside the product backlog. So all of the items that are contained in the product backlog is, uh, you know, is are all categorized as product backlog item. Product owner PO. All right, so the PO is one of the members of the scrum team remember we have three roles or three accountabilities in scrum we have the product owner you have the scrum master you have the developer so the po is one of the members of the scrum team so whenever you hear the po or product owner know that it is one of the members of the scrum team product owner proxy so sometimes the po might delegate um someone um to be able to start on behalf of himself or herself so that person is called product owner proxy Product roadmap, right? A description of the incremental nature of how a product will be built and delivered over time, along with the important factors that drive each individual release. So um, before a project starts, uh, the Scrum team, including sometimes the, uh, the project manager, the stakeholders, will be able to sit together in order to iron out on how that project is going to go about. So that's called a product roadmap. Product vision. A brief statement of the desired future state that would be achieved by developing and deploying a product. It could, it could I mean, sometimes this is interchangeably used with um, uh, the spring goal. It could, you could see it as a spring goal, but it's not like a sprint. So this is like a product vision, like the product itself. Okay. Q. A holding place for items, um, an inventory as they wait for the next action on a in a walk stream. I mean, sometimes Q is when things are in a line waiting to uh, be deployed or waiting to be worked on. Refactoring. Sometimes in a Scrum project, sometimes the clients might not really uh, be much more happy with what the team has worked, and then he might decide to have some tweaks in there. So if the Scrum team um, goes back to work on that, that is called refactoring. Relative size measure is a way of estimating, right? So sometimes the amount of time is going to take to work on two different tasks or stories differ. So relative, as the name suggests. Release. So there has been some debate either whether release, go live, deployment, they're all the same thing or not. That is another thing we have to talk about some other time. Um, so release is the combination of feature that that's one package together make for a coherent deliverable to 
consumers or users. Also, is a version of a product that is promoted for user for use on the platform. Just like I said, but so when something is made available, it is released to the end user, or it is made available or like go live when it's become much more available to the user. Release goal. All right, so what is the release goal? Uh, a clear statement of the purpose and desired outcome of a release, right? Um, for a release to happen, it must achieve a goal. So, so that is in a short form of what a release goal is. Release plan, um, the output of release planning on a fixed date release, the release plan will specify the range of features. So what that means is um, the kind of step-by-step uh, process in order to release and you know the product to the end user. Release planning, long term planning that answers questions like when will when will we be done or how much would this cost? So well, in other words, there are kind of things that are put into consideration before a release happens. So that is called a release planning. Release trend, an approach to aligning the vision, planning, and interdependencies of many teams by providing cross team synchronization based on a common cadence. OK, so if you are very much conversant with SAVE, which is Scaled Agile Framework, it means scale, Scaled Agile Framework is scaling Scrum at an enterprise level, like having Scrum in a bigger, larger level. So release trend is when the team kind of try to sync or try to uh try to agree on how to be or how to how each individual team is going to attune themselves to what the organization wants to produce or wants to work on risk likelihood that an event will be accompanied by undesirable consequences so it has to you can either say um something that might affect the progress right so an unforeseen circumstance that, exactly that's what i wanted to say role a set of responsibilities that might be fulfilled by one or more people for example the scrum roles of po scrum master and developer so we have basically three roles uh you could say role is a position or accountability so in scrum you say either say role scrum role or scrum accountability is just the same thing scrum what is scrum okay so i know people different people have different uh, meanings associated with what Scrum is, even if you go to Scrum Alliance or Agile Alliance or Scrum.org or Scrum.com, people have different interpretation on inter different meanings or what different definition of what Scrum is. But I just wanted to draw your attention to Scrum is a is a broad word from a sport called rugby, right? So, but the definition of Scrum is a lightweight Agile framework to manage complex products and services, right? So in other words, one thing you have to know is that Scrum is an Agile framework, one of the Agile frameworks. So there are other frameworks like Kanban, like Lean, Airstream programs. So Scrum is one of them and it's a lightweight. What that means is it is very flexible. You can tweak things. You can adapt it to the way that it makes more sense to you. Scrum Master. Sometimes I tell people I'm a Scrum Master. They're like, what is a Scrum Master? Right? So, excuse me. So, a Scrum Master is one of the three roles on a Scrum, right? On a Scrum team. He's a coach or she's a coach, facilitator, impediment remover, and servant leader. So, Scrum is a person who works with developers in order to deliver value. So, you can see that that way. Uh, he's not basically or she's not basically, basically a, or realistically a developer, but he worked with these people to be able to help them, guide them so that at the end they can be able to deliver value to the client. Scrum or Scrums. So Scrum or Scrum is just another way um, scaling Scrum, right? When Scrum team uh, 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 scaling or getting more larger in order to, in, 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 in order to avoid overcrowdedness, so you can scale it in this way called Scrum or Scrum, SOS. An approach to coordinating the work of multiple Scrum teams. So when people are getting much, the team members are getting larger, so you can, you know, engage in Scrum or Scrum. Scrum team, a team composed of PO, Scrum Master and developers. 
self-organization is one of the attributes of a scrum team, right? By self-organization, it means that these guys decide on how to work on a project. There is no command and control, right? You tell them what to do, and they decide on how. Seventh leader. So a scrum master is described as a seventh leader, right? A person who achieves the result for his organization by giving priority intention to the needs of colleagues. Someone who is there for the welfare of the other person. Spike. All right, so Spike, I mean, this Spike is a huge discussion on its own, but I just included it here so that uh, when you hear Spike, you can be able to uh, identify what it means. It's a time box user story or tax that is created in order to research a question or resolve a problem. It focuses on regarding inf gathering information and finding answers to questions rather than producing an increase. So Spike, in other words, is for example, when team members are working on a project and they run into kind of a roadblock or they can't really, they don't have the knowledge in order to resolve an issue, they engage in research. So that research is called a spike. Sprints, a short duration, right? A time box. Um, it is a time box between a week to a month during which the Scrum team is focused on producing a potentially shippable product increment that meets DOD, which is definition of that. So sprint is a duration where the developers work on a project. All right, sprint backlog. After the sprint planning, um, items that are ready to be worked on a sprint are moved from this product backlog to the sprint backlog. So that's the sprint backlog is another type of container, but in this case, it is those items or those stories or tasks, features that are ready to be worked on. So they are content in a container called Sprint Backlog. Sprint Demo. The Sprint Demo is one of the Scrum ceremonies. We have the daily stand-up, we have the Sprint Planning, we have the Sprint de a Demo or Sprint Review and Sprint Retrospective. So sometimes Sprint Demo and Sprint Retrospective are used interchangeably. All right, so it's a time when the developers will be able to demo to a client what they have worked on. All right, sprint goal. Um, each sprint has a vision or what developers or the Scrum team would love to accomplish. That is what is called a sprint goal. Sprint planning. Sprint planning is a time where the developers or the Scrum team will be able to discuss, have the conversation on how to work on a sprint. Sprint retrospective is an event. Uh, like I said, there are uh, daily standard sprint review, sprint retrospective, and sprint planning. So, retrospective is a time where the developers will be able to reflect on how on how they have used Scrum to work on the project. So, it's on the Scrum process, not on the product itself. Sprint review, like I said, is interchangeably used with Sprint demo where the developer will be able to showcase uh, what they have worked on. Stakeholder, a person, group, or organization that affects can be affected by organization actions. So this stakeholder is a person who has an authoritative um, personality um, on a project. So we have two types of stakeholders, internal and external. Stakeholder value, the value that a solution delivers to stakeholders. So I mean. Stakeholders always have a contribution. So whatever opinion or whatever goal that the, the, the stakeholder has on a project is called a stakeholder value. Story mapping is a technique that takes that takes a user-centric perspective for generating a set of user story. All right, story points. This is a measuring how much like effort that is going to be required um, for a particular task. So Talk about story points, and especially when team members are doing estimation. So that's why you talk about story points, and there are different techniques to do story pointing. All right. Strategic de technical depth. Like I pointed out the last video I made, so there are different types of technical depth, and I've explained what technical depth is. So if you haven't listened or if you don't know what technical depth, I would encourage you to revisit the previous video I made about technologies in Agile or Scrum. So strategic, strategic Technical depth is a form of technical depth that is used as a tool to help organizations better 
quantify and leverage the economies of importance, often time sensitive decision. Swarming um, is a behavior where team members with available capacity and appropriate skill collectively work on an item to finish what has already been started before moving ahead to begin work on new items. So most you can um, see this technique using Kanban. OK, synchronization. Causing multiple events to happen at the same time, right? So when things are happening at the same time, you've got, you know, that's the idea of synchronization or so sync. Targeted technical debt, another type of technical debt, um, a status category for technical debt that represents debt that is known and has been targeted for servicing. All right, so uh, we're going to stop here for today because of time. Um, I'll finish up with the remaining parts uh, for the next video, which is going to be released on Friday, uh, which is three days from today. So look out, look out for that. Um, if you have any um you know, terminology you have heard or you've seen somewhere and then you think uh, or you're not sure, please just hit me or, you know, put that on the comment section or you can email me and then we can be able to, I will be able to incorporate that and then I can be able to uh, explain that in detail. All right. Okay. Okay, Doki. Uh, thank you again for visiting my website and my channel today. If you have any question, please put that in the comment section. Uh, if this is the first time of visiting my channel, please click the like button there, um, share it, view, subscribe, and even refer your friends, your colleagues, and family members. If you want to have a chat one-on-one -on -one with me, or you're looking for a place to um, do your Scrum Master, you know, course, definitely reach out to me, and we can schedule something. All right, that's where we're going to stop here for today, and then I will see you again next time. All right. I hope you have a wonderful time. Bye for now.